This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. Fentanyl is a huge problem in the U.S. and it often gets in through our southern border. That is why Governor Newsom says he is sending more National Guard troops to the border. The number of personnel will increase from 155 National Guard troops to 392. Many of them will be assigned to the San Isidro and Otay Mesa ports of entry to help Customs and Border Patrol screen for drugs. Last fall, Governor Newsom announced the number of guards would be increased by 50% at four points of entry along the U.S.-Mexico border, including San Isidro and Otay Mesa in San Diego County. That figure represented an increase from 40 guards to 60 at ports of entry. But it's unclear how much this latest increase would bolster CalGuard's presence at the border. Governor Newsom tweeted this video yesterday. The National Guard now has over 390 men and women that are working uh, not only on the border, but throughout the state of California on counter narcotics, on drug interdiction strategies, sharing information, reconnaissance. It's had tremendous success, particularly as it relates to the interdiction of fentanyl. The governor says the number of seizures back up why more resources are needed. We have the latest figures on our website. Just go to NBC7.com. The San Diego Sheriff's Department is trying to stop a man who they say keeps posting flyers around the county attempting to lure children and teens for sex. And today that man will be in court. Investigators say Robert Owens posted dozens of flyers offering everything from clothing to cuddles. Last month, sheriff's deputies posted, uh, posed rather as a 16 year old girl and then responded to one of the flyers. They say he solicited the decoy for sex. Owens was arrested, but after he was released, they say he started posting flyers once again. The sheriff's department is now asking for a criminal protective order to try and get him to stop. We can take action and, um, you know, do what we can in our communities. It's not going to come from, you know, arresting enough people. Um, it's going to come from um, our communities getting wise. Owens is set to face a judge today. After multiple claims of abuse, San Diego's Roman Catholic Diocese announced it will file for bankruptcy. Cardinal McElroy says the decision comes after a year of negotiations with attorneys representing survivors as a means of reaching a settlement. On Monday, they will file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in an effort to achieve the settlement of approximately 450 legal claims. Nearly 60% of those survivors are now more than 50 years old. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, we made a lot of mistakes, and so those have to get addressed. If they really want to uh, do justice, then they should pay what the fair value is for the harm that was done. That's all we can do. We can't give people their lives back, but we can hold accountable by the amount of money that they pay uh, for the harm that, that that's been done. That, that's, that's the only thing we can do. Irwin says if they are unable to reach a deal, cases may have to be released from the bankruptcy back to the state court to actually go to trial, and that is a really long process. The diocese says without filing for bankruptcy, they wouldn't be able to afford to pay the hundreds of survivors. Today, Mayor Todd Gloria is getting ready to sign next year's city budget. It has been a controversial plan as he tried to overcome a $172 million deficit. It includes an extra $28 million for our homeless crisis to be used on projects like the H Street Barracks and possibly the proposed mega shelter. There's also money for middle and low income homes. And now let's get a check on our weekend weather forecast. Hi, meteorologist Angelica Campos. Warming up today and tomorrow, Father's Day, you're going to see a lot more clouds and temperatures dropping. Today, we're going to see also a mix of clouds and sunshine this morning into the afternoon, and uh, conditions looking fairly nice around the county. Temperature wise, we're going to average in the low 70s this afternoon along the coast, 83 inland, 111 in the deserts, mountains 87. An excessive heat warning is in effect for the deserts, and it will remain in effect until 8 p.m. on Saturday. Thank you. San Diego is known for its beaches, but you might see something extra special on your next trip. Yep, that's right, a blue whale. That's next. Stay with us.
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 investigates and responds. One team fighting for you. Uncovering. Why, why do you always have to go in? You have to. The police have an obligation. Getting answers. What has been the response? Minimal, very minimal. And results. And they said, you have your money back. And I was just overwhelmed. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 investigates and responds. So thank you, thank you, thank you. One team fighting for you. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back on this Friday. The Kathy Hopper Friendship Center in North Claremont is celebrating its grand reopening today. The Senior Center invited city leaders and members of the community over to learn more about its programs. It operated for decades under the management of local nonprofit organizations, the last of which shut its doors during the COVID-19 pandemic. The city's Parks and Recreation Department took over in March 2023. They invite anyone 60 and better to come check it out. San Diego Unified and several partnering groups kicked off their summer food program for children and families in need. Tens of thousands of students rely on free meals during the school year and summer break. Well, it's no different. NBC 7's Nicole Gomez reports from City Heights, where today was all about collaboration. Well, we're at Rosa Parks Elementary where summer school is in full swing and in talking with one of the San Diego Unified reps, she said it's great to see all these different organizations partnering and working together to feed children and families because oftentimes they all work separately. It was breakfast rush hour this morning for dozens of summer school students at Rosa Parks Elementary in City Heights. It's a school where anyone under 18 can come get free breakfast or lunch during the summer months, no questions asked, all funded by the USDA. Schools, libraries, parks, and other community centers are turning into nutrition hubs this summer because San Diego Unified says five out of 10 children, so about half of all their students, qualify for the Universal Meals Program. Um, they are, are vulnerable. They are growing exponentially this um, period of time in their lives when they're, you know, there's a reason for the components in a meal, a school meal. They're laying down bone. They need calcium and vitamin D from milk to grow properly. And, um, and so it's vital. Feeding San Diego is also involved in this partnership. Today they set up a food pantry on campus where anyone in the community could come fill up a tote with grocery items for free. They're giving like pretty good, you know, things that you actually go buy at the store so if you can get it for free. Why not take it, you know? Because everything's so expensive here. Yeah. We go to the store right now, it's like 100 and something for 10 items. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. You know, kids, they want to grab this, they want to grab that. So it's so expensive. You can't say no, you know, There's, you see their little face. So. <laughs> well, Feeding San Diego is doing these pop-up food pantries all summer long. You can check their website for a location near you. Reporting from City Heights, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. Meteorologist Angelica Campos will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Partly cloudy along the coast, low 70s today, 83 degrees inland mountains are going to average in the upper 80s. Hi, meteorologist Angelica Campos. We're also tracking an excessive heat warning over the deserts. You'll notice today those numbers really cranking up in the mountains, areas like Ramona 88, mid 90s in Warner Springs. But the worst of the heat happens to be in the desert. So please be mindful of that. Stay hydrated and uh, take breaks if you're out in the heat. On Sunday, cooling down in our coastal communities and pretty much all over the county. All right, thank you. The beach is probably a good place to be. And if you're at the beach this weekend, you'll want to keep an eye out because you might just see a blue whale up close. Scripps researchers say blue whales are coming closer to shore and they're here earlier than usual this year. Check out this video here taken two weeks ago off the, uh, the coast of La Jolla there. Scientists say they're following food, which could be in abundance due to this year's red tide. The Scripps team used this opportunity to test a new research method.
getting as close as legally allowed to collect water samples that they hope contain whale DNA. Just like us, whales shed skin cells and um, bodily fluids in, into their environment as they're moving through their environment. And a current research question among the marine mammal community is can we leverage that environmental DNA, as we call it, to actually detect the whales without having to biopsy them, without having to go out on a ship with binoculars and see them or monitor their, their sounds or study them acoustically. Hmm, pretty cool, right? Well, researchers say they will know in about a week or so if the DNA collection was successful. If this method sounds familiar, it is because Cal State Long Beach's Shark Lab, you may recall, used similar technology monitoring Delmar Beach after that recent shark attack. We have more coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.